Not much is known about the Tholians. In fact, we see more about their technology and appearance than their culture or society. In universe, this is attributed to their zealous defence of their territory, and many a ship has fallen victim to their attacks after wandering into their space. Hi all, Rick here, and today's index is on the Tholian Assembly, the extremophile non-humanoid race that causes no end of headaches for the Federation. The most commonly known fact of the Tholian Assembly is that their homeworld, Tholia Prime, also called Tholis, is an extreme environment suspected to be a Y-class planet of high temperatures and pressure with a non-nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere. Their biology is uniquely adapted to life in these environments, and therefore the most common habitation for humanoid life is lethal to them. They exist comfortably in temperatures of 207 degrees Celsius, 480 Kelvin, and have a distinctly non-humanoid appearance. They have a head with what appears to be eyes at the top, however, these formations glow, so they likely do not operate in the same way as a human's eyes. They have eight limbs, six legs and two arms, with each ending in grasping appendages. Lower temperatures, below 380K, would cause them great distress as their exoskeleton fractures. Prolonged exposure leads them to freezing and then shatter painfully. They are a hermaphroditic species possessing both male and female organs. They support exoskeletons made from a silicon crystalline compound, possibly silica. This would make them similar to earth diatoms, which consume minerals from their surrounding environment as well as a form of photosynthesis. The Tholians may do something similar, as they seem to breathe anaerobically through their shells, filtering out most toxins. They are also speculated to draw nutrients from their atmosphere. Their crystalline structure is also used in communication, as they make audible chirping and screeching sounds, which are formed from resonating its shell. This can be amplified to even higher levels, as they can utilise their own carapace as a transmitter to emit EM waves to commune with others of their kin, even across vast distances. Some sources say that the Tholians pass on their memories and identity through the transfer of electrical currents to a newly birthed body, so that while their former body dies, the individual lives on. This is not possible should the body die before transference. This is suggested to be possible through the electrical charge that is contained within their cells. Their unique method of radio communication and this electromagnetic transfer lead them to generate an ambient static field of consciousness that was akin to a shared collective intelligence. This has given rise to the belief that they in fact share a hive existence, but it's more like a natural Wi-Fi connecting them all. They called it the Lattice, and it could be sensed by a telepathic species such as Vulcans, though a uniquely Tholian experience. The Tholians practice marriage, and are bonded into threes. Newborn Tholians are altered at birth to grow into a role assigned to them. This includes a number of physical changes in their size and build, and this is tied into their caste system that they operate. Individuals are assigned a role based on their previous experiences, and these fall into a number of divisions, from warriors to political roles. There are leadership roles within each of these, often referred to as queens or other monarchic titles by outsiders, as well as specialised diplomats, medical personnel, and the sciences. The science cast is further divided into all aspects of research and development, but is pretty low in their social hierarchy. This is the reason for their relatively slow pace of development. The Tholians have one unique technology where they excel above all others, and that is their tractor beam tech. That sounds like an underwhelming specialisation, however in practice it is anything but. They have developed a system where they can create energy webs of interlinking beams. These are deployed in both offensive and defensive capabilities. Energy from within the web is absorbed and then dispersed throughout the frame, while from the outside, energy can pass into it just fine, leading to effective traps. The species tended to hail before firing on intruders into their territory, 
but its borders were routinely changing as they claimed and relinquished systems beyond their core space. They did see fit to create a universal translator for the benefit of other races, however, showing that violence was not their go-to option, but one they had no qualms about resorting to. They will fire on intruders after their warnings are not heeded, then attempt to capture a vessel with a web or destroy it, and they had a reputation for punctuality and precision. Outside of their Class Y environment, they'd have to wear mechanised pressure suits, and this is represented in Star Trek Online, as their military makes use of such frames while using portable versions of their tractor tech, and even using it as a projectile. They also produce a sort of webbing that may be organic in origin, and used as a silica-based silk. The interior of their ships, according to some sources, are based on the same tri-design that is present throughout their architecture and heraldry. There are consoles on every surface, even in cavernous rooms, suggesting that they are able to scurry up walls and able to operate from strange angles without disorientation. In the Mirror Universe, the Tholians sought to employ humanoids to work as labourers in environments they couldn't stand. If an inhabited planet fell into their territory, they all but enslaved the populace and forced them to work in the environments that they themselves could not enter. Starfleet would continue to consider the Tholians a threat due to their xenophobic attitudes well into the 24th century, over 200 years after their first contact. Starfleet was aware of them prior to the 2260s. The years 2252 to 2254 saw the first Federation conflict with the Tholians. Not the first Federation, but Starfleet. Skirmishes continued to erupt throughout history, most often when Starfleet encountered areas of freshly claimed Tholian territory. 2298 eased tensions between the species, as the Federation stepped in to manage disputes between the Tholians and the Nael over extra-dimensional tunnels to the small Nagelianic Cloud. However, by 2353 they were back at war with the Federation, with individuals like Kyle Riker and then Captain Layton surviving the conflicts. Once again, this skirmish cannot have lasted too long, as in 2372 the Tholians made it known to Starfleet that they wished to make use of the Bajoran wormhole. They then, however, signed a non-aggression pact with the Dominion in 2373, content to let the two powers beat each other. Though analysts pointed out that if the Federation fell, then the Assembly did not stand a chance either. This hostility doesn't seem to extend to other species, however, as they do engage in commerce and trade with dignitaries on Deep Space Nine, technically a Bajoran outpost at the time, and exporting goods with Ferenganar, such as silks. By the emergence of the Dominion War, the Tholians had sent observers and politicians to Earth, indicating a possible de-escalation of hostilities between Starfleet and the Assembly, while also extending ties to Romulus by 2379. Both the Klingon Empire and Federation border Tholian space, though this seems to have changed with time and the expansion of the Federation. Some newer research has shed light on their territorial claims, being based on the movement of certain astronomical bodies within their territory every eight cycles, meaning that what originally appeared as random annexing of systems, in fact may be predictable and to a design. One reoccurring trait is that they seem borderline obsessed with the exploration of time and alternate universes. They seem to continually show an interest in space-time bending phenomena like wormholes, rifts, interphasic space, time travel and such. And they seem far more interested in this than exploring the physical space around them. This can be seen in their pursuit of future tech in 2152, and their Mirror Universe counterparts luring in the USS Defiant in 2268. In hindsight, these interactions have been seen as machinations within the complex temporal Cold War, marking the Tholians as a potential faction operating at different time periods. The Tholians are a very alien species when compared to standard humanoid forms most commonly encountered, 
and have a strong xenophobic attitude towards such species. Their extreme life support requirements means that it is seldom that the species ever interacts with others and continues the air of mystery around them, and their continual pursuit of extra dimensional technology and research adds to this strangeness. Compounded with the geometry of their starships, perhaps it's all tied to them perceiving the universe in a different fashion. A lot of this information is yet to be confirmed in canon, but then their natural habitat was born from extra materials too, and there are a lot of ideas here that simply expand upon what we've seen. For example, I love the idea of a planet-wide natural song of information created by their crystalline communication that carries the individuality to others. That would be a nice idea to expand upon. Thanks for listening to this Cultural Index video on the Tholians, and as usual the next choices for the Index can be voted for over on the Community tab, with the choices being from two more otherworldly inhabitants, either the Mass Effect universe's Rotund Volus, or one of the opposite end of the spectrum, the Ice Warriors of Doctor Who. Let me know by casting your vote, and until the next video, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.